Every state has its diners, bistros, and cafes, but only Wisconsin can lay claim to the Supper Club. Welcome to the special presentation of The Dish on Wisconsin Supper Clubs. Presented by Wisconsin Elevator, Fox Valley Elevator, and Crepline & Associates. The Dish on Wisconsin Supper Clubs. It's a Wisconsin thing. Michelle, your table is ready. Thank you, and so glad you could join me for our one-year celebration of The Dish on Wisconsin Supper Clubs. It was you, the viewer, who first saw our original story and said, we want more. Let's take a look at how this delicious journey began. Like anybody else, you know, I went on Facebook and tried to look for a, a group or a page or something that maybe talked about Wisconsin Supper Clubs and where I could read reviews and learn about some new ones I haven't tried yet, and there wasn't anything. That was just about two years ago. Now Sean Neiman and his wife Ellen and son Drew sit at the Rivers Bend Supper Club in Green Bay and can't believe how the Wisconsin Supper Club enthusiasts group has grown. We're now over 61,000 members and we grew by another, I think, 350 members this week alone. And a growing number are traveling around with these mini orange cones, the creation of fellow enthusiast Jill Paul of Appleton. I saw one man post, um, I'm the guy in the flamingo Hawaiian shirt, come, come talk to me if you're part of this group. And I'm like, there's got to be an easier way to connect with each other. And uh, we've sold over 3,300 cones shipped to 25 different states so far. It's really fun when you go out, you can see the cones at the bar and people point them out and scream across the bar, there's a cone, you know, and then they come over and start talking to you and um, you make friends. Rivers Bend says on any given Friday or Saturday night and even during Sunday brunch, it's seeing more and more of these little orange cones, a great conversation starter in an experience that is meant to be talked about and shared. Almost every night somebody's in here with one of the cones. And what do you make of it? Uh, well, we love it, yeah. I feel like the Wisconsin Supper Club enthusiast is just kind of a positive, uplifting community uh, and makes us feel a part of that. And we're honored to be able to, to serve everybody that comes in. To be clear, enthusiasts are not trying to present themselves as professional food critics. In fact, they ask that fellow group members only post on Facebook about their successes, like the lady bowlers who raved about the relish tray at Pinewood Supper Club in Mosinee, or the skyscraper-sized ice cream drinks at Benedetti's in Beloit, or a lower-calorie version of the grasshopper called the Naughty Girl Scout that I came across at Major Lee's in Sheboygan. It's quaint. It's like being up north in the Northwoods, right on the outskirts of the city. You could come here and there's always a different crowd in here every Sunday. You never know who you're going to run into. And it just so happens I did brush elbows with a local celebrity. I was an extra over in Abu Dhabi where their Brad Pitt was filming his War Machines movie. Jeff says no matter where he travels, he always winds up coming back here. I've been all over the world. I've spent 10 years in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Detroit, California. Texas, Florida, D.C., and this is something very unique. Which brings us to another popular topic of conversation. What exactly is a supper club? Where you have good food that's made from scratch, that uh, the owner, they're not, you know, in some other state, and they're, you know, behind the bar and, and just showing you a good time. I think it's a, it's a gathering spot. Like, my parents would go every weekend. So they had friends there. They knew the bartenders. They knew the servers. Um, they knew everybody at the supper club. Even Rivers Bend, which prides itself on its ribeye with a view, says a supper club cannot be judged by food alone. People define it in many different ways. Um, the tradition of the table linens, the hand modeled old fashions, uh, we have the full salad bar, those all go into the definition of it. But I think that a supper club is more than just a restaurant. It's a destination where you can kind of just spend your whole evening and it's just somewhere that you go for the whole night. And meet up with a fellow enthusiast or two or three or four, as many as you like, because when it comes to Wisconsin supper clubs, it seems there's always room at the table. I think we're seeing more of a, a drive through world now, and I think there's still a lot of people, including those in the younger generations, that want to take a couple hours on like a Friday night and turn dinner into an event. Friday, Friday. Sean tells me they now have 84,000 members and a newsletter with money saving offers. You can find them on Facebook, the Wisconsin Supper Club Enthusiasts with an S. 
Coming up, we go to the town of Scott and visit the brothel turned supper club that could be haunted as Local 5 celebrates one year of the dish on Wisconsin supper clubs. There's just something about supper clubs where you just need time. Time to enjoy the homemade food and time to let the many stories you hear digest. To the town of Scott we go, where stories abound at Club Chalet. The sun is still a good hour away from setting over the Bay of Green Bay. And already savory smells are wafting from Club Chalet. Atop the hill that is Nicolet Drive, what used to be the old State Highway 57. That is the prime rib sandwich with blue cheese. It has served locals and tourists alike for nearly 80 years, changing hands only a handful of times. Current owner Sean Chrisman and head chef Corey Shaw are bringing new sizzle to this long-standing supper club. We wanted to do something different. We wanted to do flame broil. We wanted our steaks to go out amazing. So it was a little nerve-wracking changing and seeing how you know, a lot of our locals were going to, to handle some of the change, but the amount of feedback that we've gotten from it is just overwhelming. Club Chalet is a museum of sorts with collectibles from its early days in the 1920s. Only photos remain of the original bar after a boiler explosion. They even saved the original menu from its grand reopening way back when. It's from 1962. Oh, wow. wow. So at that time, you can see where a lobster plate was $1.75. And during that time, we also sold over 240 pounds of lobster a week. It was, we were known for our lobster specials. The open flame salmon is giving its legendary lobster a run for its money lately, and their unique take on the twice-baked potato and hot bacon dressing at the salad bar getting oohs and ahs during my visit during Buck Off Wednesdays, when all appetizers and drinks are a dollar off. Which includes their after-dinner drinks that keep the self-operating blenders churning at all times at both ends of the bar. All supper clubs have ice cream drinks, like the Brandy Alexander and the Grasshopper, but only Club Chalet has more than 40 ice cream drinks. We think the most of any supper club in the state. We wanted something to stand out, be a little different, and we've actually succeeded in that. <laughs> Turns out Sean Christman's first love has always been food. At 16, he owned his first place, a tiny car hop. But then school and life happened. When the chalet went up for sale in 2019, he jumped. I walked in, I was like, wow, I fell in love. I walked into the dining room and I was like, that giant fireplace is what sold me. I was like, wow. And if you look closely at certain tables, you'll see these bell ringers, a way we believe customers announced their arrival when this was a brothel. So from my understanding is that things happen on our, our balcony out in the dining room, which used to be originally the bar area. And then there are the stories one hears, like the one about the ghost of the chalet. Usually every day you can see a person coming down. They come down the steps from the upstairs and they go into that dishwashing room. It just looks like a shadow. Legends abound in this historic place where the tradition of the Wisconsin Supper Club is served up with the kind of hospitality that stands the test of time. You get to know your customers. It's actually nice to, you know, get to know them a little bit. Our journey is far from over. It's time to get it in gear. Our next supper club is perfect for those who like to roll through the countryside before supper. The Dish parks it at MJ's in Hortonville next. The gearhead in your household might find our next stop of special interest. I followed the sounds of purring engines and parked it for a while at a downright cozy spot in Outagamie County. The motor's humming, and the guitar's strumming. Then it must be Wheel Wednesdays at MJ's Supper Club. Nestled on a picturesque spot along Highway MM in Hortonville, they serve up a mountain of your Supper Club favorites, but also started a liver and onions special at the request of the uncle of head chef, Isaac Solbert. And it's been catching on. I don't like serving it or making it, but the customers like it, so I like making them pretty much what they want. Chef Isaac and his crew have a lot more fun with their other unique offering, a side dish called loaded potato cakes. Mix all the ingredients in here, which I can't give you the recipe. And then I ball them up, and then I do an egg wash and a breading, pan them out, throw them in the freezer for a day to get them frozen. 
and then they're deep fried and amazing. Like it's a nice crunchy on the outside, but then they melt in your mouth as you eat it because the mashed potatoes are so warm. Popular dish? Very popular. Made over 7,000 of them last year. When you do make a pit stop, be sure to check out all the old photographs they have here. Harkening back to the time when out back it was the community watering hole. They even have one of the old lockers from when kids used to come here and learn how to swim. Now the old timers come in and dish about the good old days. And uh, it actually was owned by some of my relation years ago who owned it. And we used to come out here quite often with the gang and swim and it was Quite deep, as a matter of fact, you could dive off the end. And the did you jump off the high dive? Back absolutely, in the day? absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so for customers, it's kind of like a remembrance of their childhood when they come here. Right, right, it is. Yep, and they tell us all different kinds of stories where they had maybe their first kiss. It's really cute. There have been some rough waters. Back in November, a fire destroyed their popular backyard bar where countless keepsakes were lost. Owner John had antiques from his grandfather's bar. He had motorcycle memorabilia. But that's when MJ's kicked into gear. They put up a tent and transformed a shed into a bar to keep it rolling until they completed yeah. building the new and improved backyard bar where the good times are sure to keep rolling all summer long. It's not like there isn't a place where you can't find a spot to settle in. There's a real sense of home here and a sense that people matter. The food is good, is excellent, but we mainly come out because of people. There, there are wonderful people that own this place and wonderful people that come out here. And it's offered a great opportunity for UW Oshkosh student Kiara. The evening hours allow her to attend class in the mornings, and since supper starts around 4 and ends at 9, she's always home early enough to study. So I paid for my first schooling in full out of my savings account from waitressing here. But it's not the lure of money alone that keeps the hard-working servers hammering away. The employers are great to work with, and I love it so much. I, I've never called in sick yet. I took off a couple days when my mom passed away, but besides that, I'm always here. Go ahead. Call them old-fashioned, because at MJ's, a cocktail and conversation always matter before supper. You meet so many different people at all different ages. It's just really fun. You come in a customer, you leave his family. I've got so much more dish to come. Love Supper Club style. Meet the Seymour couple who fell in love at the Supper Club and raised their family in their Supper Club. The next dish is just moments away. Ah, romance, supper club style. To see more we go, to dig into a story about a couple who met at a supper club, ran a supper club, and then decided to pass it down to folks who were just like family. Monday night and the parking lot at Krabby's Country Club in Seymour is packed. If you rush to get there, the welcome signs say it all. Time to slow down. Owner Steve is behind the bar where they offer all forms of old-fashioned, while wife Sherry keeps things cooking in the kitchen. It was a match made in Supper Club heaven. Steve proposed at Table 11 when it was Frank's Supper Club. They took over in 1980 and raised their kids and grandkids here. You look back at it now and you say, boy, it, it was meant to be, and it was in the cards. Every one of our children have worked here because I told them they had to work somewhere. If it wasn't for me, they had to get a job somewhere else. So they've all worked here and still help us out here and there, but they've gone on to professions and other business owners. They own their own businesses, so yeah, all of them have done real well. But now they're selling outside of the family. Sherry's coming out of breast cancer treatment, and Steve longs to venture out more together as part of his travel business. It changes how you look at life, you know, that you're not going to be here forever. But it, it just seems like a blink of an eye that we've got this many years in. But it's time to do other things, you know, when you want, whenever you want. <laughs> so. For weeks, customers and even former co-workers have come back to say thank you in person. Steve and Sherry were the most awesome bosses I've ever had. We've always been friends and done a lot of stuff together. And I love the two of them. For all the challenges the Krabbies have faced over the years of owning and operating a supper club, Steve says the hardest part came during the COVID pandemic when he looked out onto his dining room and saw none 
of his regular customers. Well, I was a firefighter for 30 years, and when you go into a place after they have a fire, it's very eerie. And that's the feeling we got here. Time stood still for that was 11 weeks. And uh, I was so happy to get back opened up again and see the same faces again. And it's because of their customers they took their time to find their successors, which actually turned out to be their neighbors. And yes, the name is staying. When something works as well as it has for Steve and Cherry for 37 years, you know that they, they've, they've figured out their secret sauce on how to do it right. So we decided when, when Steve and Sherry came to Janine and asked them to take it over, we promised them we wouldn't change it. We'd keep it the same. A passing of the torch, Wisconsin Supper Club style, where customers are friends and co-workers are family in a savory mix that tastes like home. I want to come here with my kids and my grandkids, you know? It's something that needs to go on the way it is. Supper clubs are so much about tradition, and there are many traditions at Moxie's in Casco. We'll dig into polka music and fish boils when our special edition on Wisconsin Supper Clubs comes right back. It's been a wonderful year traveling across Wisconsin for the latest dish on supper clubs. And if and when you venture to Casco, you've got some polka and roasted chicken waiting. If you venture out to Moxie's in Casco, make sure you bring your appetite. People tell us we have the best roasted chicken in the state. A sense of humor. We're a supper club atmosphere at casual dining. But it was too many letters to put on the side, so I put fine dining. And your dancing shoes, if you dare. Tradition and home cooking make this supper club a gathering place since 1973, when Joanne Delabro took over with her husband, whose nickname, Moxie, came from his baseball playing days. You might catch Moxie stopping by on occasion, but Joanne is definitely here daily to help her son, Doug, who owns it now, with preparing their specialties. As I'm getting older, mm -hmm. and I have to go for my physical, and the doctor keeps telling me, the reason you're feeling so good is because you're staying busy. You're not sitting. And you have your beer once in a while. And from time to time, she might just dish about their secret to their popular chicken. Well, see, you marinate your chicken. There's a lot of places now that handle roasted chicken. But if they don't marinate it the way they're supposed to, it's not as good. I'm a people pleaser. Through the years, Moxie's has paid great attention to what its customers want, and many times that includes sharing in the customs of their ancestors. That is, after all, how Father's Day polka began. And the Wednesday night trout boil in the summer. Customer says, do you ever do a trout boil? I says, no, but I will. So we started last year. We did three of them, sold everyone out. For this, Doug brings in a local kid who's a rewinder at MCC Label Company in Algoma by day. But he dreams about owning his own place and looks forward to sharing with the community what his family passed down to him. It's been through about four generations now. It was just passed down through my dad, through his granddad, from his great-granddad. It's all about family and celebrating a tradition that is uniquely Wisconsin. I don't think a lot of people from out of state understand supper clubs and old fashions and uh, and they don't understand the supper world like we do. New people can learn. Although Doug tries to make out-of-towners feel welcome with his Chicago Cubs decorations, make no mistake, come football season, this is Packers territory. Go ahead, wonder with the rest of us why there's carpet on the ceiling of the bar. This is a supper club with character that's full of characters, including me, who still waits for the day when I'll meet Moxie himself. <laughs> what a great excuse to come on back. Try us for the first time or come back and try us for the first time again. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, I'm stuffed. Consider yourself served. Thank you for watching this special presentation of the Dish on Wisconsin Supper Clubs.